everyone, welcome to Crossout. Crossout is a free to play MMO game currently available on PC, Xbox One and PS4. It's a post apocalyptic game where you build a car with different weapons and then you perform missions, raids and other things in PvP or PvE. Now if you're looking to get into the game there is a lot of menus and whatnot. So this is what you'll see after you've done the tutorial little little stint at the beginning of the game. But then it doesn't really teach you much after that. So I'm just going to go through the menus today. This is a basic introductory tutorial to the game. As you can see my vehicle is here in the garage at the moment. So this is where you'll be spending most of your time in the garage. You've got build, battle or test drive. So the build menu is where you'll be building your vehicle. I'm going to be saying the buttons because I'm on Xbox One, but they'll be a little bit different if you're playing on PS4 or PC, but the gist is the same. So this is your vehicle. You'll start out with absolutely nothing and you'll build your way up. But we'll cover building in another video later on. So the first thing you want to do is press the right right trigger button, the far right, and that will show you what everything does, which is pretty useful to have open even as a player who's played over a day of gameplay. So B is exit. That will take you out of the build menu and back to the main menu. If you press the menu button, it will open up your storage. And your storage will show you all your parts that you've got to build a car. As you can see, I've got a, a fair few, not, not too many. So your frames are your main frame of your vehicle. They're going to be your 6x4s, your 4x4s, your 2x4s that you're going to set down. And then your cabins. Then you've also got your weapons. You've got hardware, which... Um, boost certain things like the radar for example makes you um, detect enemies further along your weapon radiator um, does overheat because there's no reloading it's just overheating in this game car jack it flips your car over if you fall down then you got your wheels I've got a variety of wheels that you can install the main thing with wheels is a normal wheel is just a wheel and a medium wheel ST is for steering so make sure you've got at least a couple of steering wheels on your vehicle. Structure, this is the main things you're going to be using to bulk up your vehicle, make it powerful, make it be able to take more damage. Decor, I haven't actually got any, but these give you a reputational boosts, which are basically experience points in the game. So the more decor you have, the more experience you're going to get per match. Dyes, you can change the colour of your vehicle if you so desire. And then these are your resources, you will not use them to build, they're simply to use to craft things. I've got two DIY crates as well, which are basically loot boxes. So that's that. Left stick does the camera. Round and round. Then you can go up and down with the left stick as well. You can also press the left stick to move the camera up and press the right stick to move it that way. The up arrow lifts the car up so you can build underneath it, which is always pretty useful. Pretty easier to build with that. A, you can pick up a part and then move it around. I'm not going to go into too much detail about building because I'll do a whole separate video on building. So RB removes the part, LT copies the part, X rotates the part, Y rotates the part on the Y axis. The LB button does undo. The left arrow is pretty useful because that shows you everywhere where you can attach parts to your vehicle. Which, as a new player, you probably want to turn on. You can press down to reset the camera. You can press right to remove all the parts. Okay, so that's the build menu. Like I said, we'll go over building in another video because it's pretty, Im pretty important. That's probably the second most thing you'll be doing in this game apart from battle. 
Let's have a quick look at the battle menu. We'll show you actual gameplay in another video as well. But you've got your missions, which are the PvP modes. Players fight players. You can different missions get you different things. So get the machine gun. You can your rewards for winning are either a machine gun, a car jack, a fuel barrel, a random piece of uh, equipment, and 15 pieces of scrap. And each one gives you something different. So when you're aiming to build certain things or you need certain things, then getting these ones will be what you want to do. When you've got all them, then you want to, and you're crafting higher end gear, you need to get wires and you need to get electronics. These require PS3000 and then electronics require PS4000. So I just go back to the build menu for a minute. See power score there, 4,333. Each part grants your power score. So like that narrow wing there gives me 50. The cabin gives me 250. The gun gives me 555. Um, you will be placed in a match against someone of similar power score. It's about 500, give or take. So be, be mindful of that when you're building your vehicle. If you bulk it up, but then have weak weapons and you've got high power score, you're not going to do well. So if you've got weak weapons, you want to keep your, your parts lower and keep your power score lower for your weak weapons. So that is missions. Then you've got raids. Raids are PvE modes. Um, four players team up to do certain missions. And these reset every, every couple of hours. So defense, these, these two at the top here are your easy modes. They only cost 10 fuel. Fuel's here, and you can earn fuel by putting a fuel tank in your vehicle and playing PvP modes, and then you can have a chance to earn fuel. Once your fuel runs out, you can top it up with your fuel tank, or you have to wait till tomorrow to have it re refilled. So defense is pretty self-explanatory. You are defending a certain area against easy enemies for 10 fuels. Siege is your attacking areas. And then the 40 fuels are just normal difficulty. And you require level 10 and a PS3000 for that. And you can earn these tickets in the game, in raids. There uh, can be redeemed for different crates, but it takes a lot of coupons to make a crate, so it's quite a grind. Also, you get copper in raids, which you cannot get anywhere else. You can buy it on the market or you can earn it in raids. That's the only two ways to get copper, and copper is another resource used, like wire and electronics, to build higher-end weapons and items. And you're at your 100 fuel level which requires a level 5 and a separate faction, PS4000, and 100 fuel, and you can get 40 tickets for that one, and your copper. And you've got Invasion, which you um, fight Leviathans, which are massive, massive machines that you can build yourself at level 17. I haven't actually got there yet, so. Brawls, these unlock randomly. And you get a free-for-all, where it's everyone against everyone. And the rewards are pr pretty good for this. Storm warning. A storm brews over. Think of it more like player unknown battlegrounds when the, when the fight area is decreasing and you've got the red zone. That's uh, pretty much what that is. And then a race. Pretty standard race to the, race to the finish line. That's all your modes so far. This is an open beta, so more modes will will be coming in. Like in missions at the moment, there's only um, encounter, and I can't remember what the encounters. Just there's just one base in the middle, and both teams try and capture that one base. And assault mode is where each team's got a base, and you got to try and capture the enemy base. Um, every mode is one life. So once you're destroyed, you're out for the round. But the rounds are only three minutes long, so it flows really nicely. And like I've said before in my streams, the 
the game, the matchmaking flow is really good. You've got three minute match, 20 seconds in the lobby and you're back in the next match. Providing you don't need to go back to the garage. So yeah, really quick matches. And the third thing you've got in here is test drive. Which you really want to do once you build a vehicle. Because you go out here and you test drive your, your vehicle. And that's your vehicle there. You can destroy it if you so please. And you can go back to the garage by pressing that little menu button there. And you can also in test drive, drive out and spawn bots. You spawn bots and you can see how your vehicle matches up against certain, certain people. So these bots will come and you can you can see if your your vehicle can survive. Which nine times out of ten it won't because there is a lot of bots. If you make a vehicle that can survive, it's it's a pretty damn good vehicle. But yeah. Let's get back to the garage. Right, so next menu, factions. You will always be in the engineers. Engineers are your starting faction and you are always leveling up engineers. The engineers level is your base level as well. So that is your basic faction that you always are. You get rewards for every level and you also get vehicle blueprints. So if you're not very good at building, you get these blueprints and these blueprints can be found here by pressing this button. These are the four I've saved myself. And then you can click on faction and it will show you all the blueprints you have available to you. So if I click, and let me check I've saved this one. Let's just save that. And then if you, so if you click on say that one, and then it will tell you if you're missing parts or not, but you can still load it up and then build on it. You can use these as a base, which is pretty cool. And yeah, you can, you can do all that. So once you reach level 10, I believe of the engineers, you can pick either lunatics, nomads or scavengers. Now these all give you different crafting options like the engineers. You can build these things like a machine gun will cost you 300 scrap stop sign. No way I'm building that yet. And all these different things you can build. Loot container, as you can see, you can use your coupons to build one of them. 300 coupons to build that rare loot container. And the engineer's container is 2000. So that is um, pretty drastic. Then you got your rare workbench. And I've already redeemed it, but you have to pay credits to build rare workbenches. Like if I go to the nomads and go on that one, as you can see, to build five parts, I need to pay 100 credits. 10 parts, 190, and 15 parts, 270. So you've got to rent the workbench from the nomads. The credits are only earned through either microtransactions, which are very, very expensive for what they are, I, I believe, or in the market. So the market is where people will buy and sell the things they've got. You can sell resources, weapons, you can pretty much sell anything. And you can browse, you can go, I want to buy a weapon. So what weapon do I want to buy? Well, if I want to buy a vector, it's going to cost me 540, 540 credits. I've got 860 at the minute. That's all player earned in game. I've earned them. You can go to my offers. I'm not currently selling anything or the history. What have I sold recently? Um, I purchased one of them because I just couldn't get the machine gun last night. So I bought one for 174, but I sell fuel because I get quite a lot of fuel of my fuel tank. I've sold an attack drone for five, 550. That was pretty much my biggest haul. And yeah, these shotguns I sold for three each. 
So if I go to my storage, which we've already looked at, let's say I want to sell 50 fuel. So I'll press Y on there. Now I can quick sell it for 81 coins. And I can quick buy it for 91. They're the, they're the lowest ones in the market. This market is player driven. I can change the container size to anything up to 5,000. So I go 50. People are selling that for 643. 19 quantity. So if I go sell 50 fuels for 625 and I'll sell three of them then I will get 1686 once they sell so I've put them up now you can see 625's appeared on the on there and if we go back to the market and my offers there it is Three barrels of 50 fuel, 6.25 each. So when players are looking to buy fuel, they'll go on the market, they'll see that mine's the cheapest and hopefully they'll buy it. And that is pretty much how the market runs. It's all player driven, like I said, so prices can drop really low or go really high, depending on what the players are doing. Storage, we've already been through all this, so I'm not going to go through it again. That's where all your things are. Fusion, though, is something you can do if you've got a certain amount of rare or higher items. Like if I click the Spitfire, the rare shotgun. If I had two more of them, I could um, increase it. Is pretty cool the shop is the shop um, I'm not going to show you it but the prices range from I think 150 coins is about two pound fifty and it goes up and up and up um, yeah so obviously I'd say if you like the game support it by a pack but there is car packs you can buy which have coins and blueprints and parts in them which is much better value than just buying the credits so if you want to support the game, go and buy a car pack. The lowest one, I think, is about £15, and the highest one is about 50 or 60 So depending on how much you're enjoying the game, go and support it by doing that, because you'll get the parts, you'll get credits, and you'll get blueprints for vehicles, which is pretty cool. Exhibition. This is where you can... If I click Own, that is a really bad vehicle, but I was just testing out Upload. You can upload your blueprints up to eight. Eight blueprints you can upload. And you can use this in two ways. You can upload your blueprints so they're stored for you, but also you upload your blueprints so other people can download and use them. Now, if you're not good at building, this is great because you can go through and you can find a vehicle that you think, mm, I might have all the parts for that. And you can download it and you can boot it up you can then edit it if you want but you've got a blueprint there for a vehicle and there's there's loads of them on here you know some of them are pretty silly like fidget spinner but some people actually build really good vehicles and upload them to the exhibition so if you're not good at building take a look at that and finally we got season Season is a week long, or two weeks long, sorry, yeah, two, week, two weeks long, 14 days, and what you got is a different variety of missions that you'll go through. So my first mission of this week is win 15 battles. Once I've done that, I can claim the reward and go on to the next one. Destroy 50 raiders, raiders are PvE raids, and use shotguns while doing that. So I'll have to install the shotgun on my vehicle and then destroy 50 raiders and so on and so forth and once you've done all of the easy ones then you can move on to the normal ones and yeah there's um, a lot of repay value in that win, win 10 battles install radios and you get different rewards for different 
different tiers. So, like I said, this is fuel and coins. This is your player card. You earn different portraits as you level up. As you can see, I've got five here that I can choose from. You've got medals that you earn in the match. I've got 26 out of 160, so there's a lot of medals. You get them for raids, missions, reputation, doing stuff in the market, general. You can have a look at all them. You get stickers as well, which are earned for doing different things in a match. This is your guide telling you all the parts in the game so far and telling you what they do. So if you see, oh, a jawbreaker, I'm quite interested in that one. And they got it for everything, weapons, all that. So I've received 18 of 216 items. So despite me playing a long time, I haven't even scratched the surface of this yet. And history. What did I do? You see, last night I went on an epic losing streak because I was trying to get the machine gun and it just wouldn't work. I just couldn't win. So you can just see your previous matches there and the rewards you got, which is pretty nice. And then if we go back, here are your daily, um, daily challenges and some weekly challenges. So spend 14 hours in the game in a week. That will get you 20 coins. That is madness, but hey ho. 120 minutes in the game a day gets you a container, loot crate. And then you've got your challenge here that you can actually reset if you want once. And that complete five raids using a shotgun. So that's pretty cool. Um, what else haven't we covered? This button here is, I think, the only thing I haven't covered yet. And that is setting your weapons to different buttons. If you have all machine guns, then I'd just say leave them all on one button. But say I wanted to set him, I can set him to group 2, group 3, all the way up to group 7. And all these buttons can fire a weapon, so if I wanted him on group 2, then he'd be the left trigger now. So if you've got, say, a couple of machine guns and a cannon, you really want to set them to different buttons because otherwise your cannon will be firing at the same time you're spraying your machine guns. Whereas the cannon you use accuracy, the machine guns you just spray at the enemy and knock off loads of parts. So that's the customization. I think that just about covers everything for the, for the start of Crossout. So that hopefully explains what all the menus mean and what you'll be doing in the game. Um, next tutorials will be building, actual gameplay, tactics during gameplay, um, and a market, market tutorial because there is ways you can buy things and then sell them for a profit, either by um, crafting, crafting it and then selling it a lot higher, and things like that. So, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope this helped. If you need a video tutorial on anything else cross out then just leave a comment in the section below and I will endeavor to do that for you thank you for watching gaming on demand interactive everyone and until next time folks we will see you later